we're gonna be talking about when it makes more sense to rent than to buy. Now, I wanna be really clear up front, guys. You're gonna go through this video and be like, this is all prepping to buy. Most of it is, and, and here's why. So I do believe that ultimately, you will want to own at least one property. Whether you live in it or it's an investment property, I do think that ultimately for long-term financial health, owning a property is important. And we'll talk about that on Thursday. But you're not always ready to buy now. And sometimes renting can actually be a better solution. So let's talk about a few reasons I would be telling clients on the phone, hey, are you sure you wanna buy right now? Maybe you should rent for just a little bit. And I do it a lot and people are always like, but you're a mortgage lender. That's right, I am a mortgage lender. It is my job, I get paid to do mortgages, right? But here's the thing, you have to do what's in the best interest of the client and sometimes buying is not in their best interest. So let's talk about some of those reasons and maybe, maybe you identify with them, maybe you don't. Okay, number one, your financial house is not in order. That's right, let's talk about it. If you have a ton of debt and your rent is $2,000 a month and a housing payment's gonna be 2,000 or 2,400 and you're barely making it right now, buying is not the solution unless you could find a less expensive house. And we've already established that it's gonna be the same as your rent or more. So what do you do? Do you keep on renting that $2,000 apartment that you can barely afford when you're maxed up to your eyeballs in debt? No, you need to find a cheaper place to live. And a lot of times people go, Jen, it's impossible. Uh, it depends. It's, it may be impossible based on your criteria. You know, someone may be in a three bedroom, two bath. Sometimes to get rid of debt, you're gonna need to downsize into something that may suck for a bit. It's that simple. You may need to downsize into something that's not as great, not as wonderful, so that you can pay off that debt so that you can get to what is great and what is wonderful, which is ultimately owning your own house, okay? So if you're thinking about your financial situation right now and you're maxed out and you've got so much debt and all of your money is just going to rent, debt, groceries and bills, I would strongly advise you try to see if there's something less expensive, even if it sucks, okay? I'm gonna say that because that's true. It's probably going to, if whenever you're going down in the brackets, it's gonna suck. But that's how you can get rid of that debt and that's how you can get to the next goal, okay? So renting can be a great way to get your financial house in order. I've actually had clients who've gone and lived with their parents for a while to do it, which I think is great. <laughs> I think it's really smart. Oh, there's so much shame in our culture, which I think is ridiculous because people will say to me like, yeah, well, I'm with my parents right now. And I'm like, that's great. Did you save a bunch of money? And they're like, yeah, I paid off my debt and I saved a bunch of money. I'm like, that's what going back and living with your parents for a little bit is for. Now, if you go back and you live with your parents and you get more debt and you don't pay anything off and you're not making a housing payment, that's not a good situation. But yeah, you know, having that flexibility can be great if your financial house is not in order. Um, okay, so financial house is very important. Personal life, another very important one. If you're living with someone right now, okay, and I would even say like maybe you're not living together yet, but you're like, oh, should we rent together for the first time or buy together for the first time? Uh, you should rent together for the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta see if you can live with that person. And I know that goes against some values, but at the same point, like, I'm the lender when stuff goes sideways that they come to to try to get out. And it's really tough if you buy a house with a boyfriend or a girlfriend and then you break up. You know, I'm not saying I'm totally against it. I'm just saying at least live with them first. So in a situation like that, renting can be great because it's that environment. You can see if you guys actually click before you buy a house together. Now, in addition to that, if you're watching this and you're like, well, we already live together, we're renting, but you're not sure you love them, don't buy together. If you're not happy, don't buy together. If they're abusive, get out. And sure as hell, don't buy together, okay? Really, you wanna think about this because if you're going from renting to buying and you have this other person with you and they're gonna be buying with you and you're not 100% or they're not 100%,
you're just gonna have a headache down the line. So really think about your personal situation. Is it a good idea to buy together, okay? Now, what else area, okay? So uh, if you guys are newer to the channel, you probably don't know my personal situation. It'd be weird if you did. So I am a, a homeowner. I have an investment property in New York. I've got a uh, now investment property in California. I moved to Florida in the beginning of 2023 and I'm renting right now. The reason I'm renting is for the next reason I suggest renting. I don't know Florida well. I don't. I'd been to Miami a couple times, but I didn't know if I wanted to live in a condo or a house. I'm not sure about the areas. There's so much that I don't know that I took my own advice, which is if you're moving to a new area, rent for a bit. You know, figure out where you want to live. Figure out what neighborhood you want to live in. You know, a while ago, uh, my husband and I, during COVID, we rented a place in Carmel, California. And we did that because we've always dreamed of retiring there. Like, we're going to have to hit the lotto, but we've always dreamed of retiring there. And I have to tell you, it was really educational because ultimately what we determined is there was like two streets we would ever want to buy on. And the amount of money that we thought we would need in retirement, yeah, it was like triple that. <laughs> so sometimes renting can really help you realize if what you're thinking or where you're thinking you want to buy is A, realistic, or B, if you even want to live there, right? Because I have to tell you, I've had clients where there's a certain part of California, and I'm not going to name it, there's a hospital there. And every time a new nurse would come, they'd want to buy a house. And so with the first few nurses, I was like, okay, great. Yeah, let's do it. That's wonderful. Okay, let's go. They all wanted to sell within six months. Okay. So after that happened three times, I was like, okay, whenever a nurse started coming to that area, I was like, you might want to rent. Just make sure you like the job first, like get used to the area. That's the thing, guys. If you're moving somewhere for a job, you definitely want to rent and make sure you actually like the job because what if you don't, right? And that's what we saw with these nurses is that they ended up having to go to different hospitals locally because it's really tough to buy a house and sell it six months later without losing your shirt, okay? Regardless of how much you put down, odds are you're going to lose money. So if you're moving somewhere for a job, definitely make sure you like the job first, okay? Now, let me check my list because I want to make sure I cover everything. Um, in school, yeah, that's one I actually talk to people about a lot. So if you're currently in school, let's say, once again, you're going to be a nurse, you're going to be a doctor, you're going to be a software engineer, whatever you're going to be, I would argue that it makes more sense to get out of school and then buy once you have your job lined up. And the reason I say that is because if you buy a house while you're in school, you're limiting your search options for jobs. And when you get out of school, you wanna be able to get the best job you can that's gonna be the most exciting for you or the best pay. And not having roots is gonna give you the whole country to choose from. So I do argue, you know, if you're going to school, um, that often it's better to look at purchasing once you've determined where you're going to work. You like the job, right? We covered this. You know, let's say that you're going to school in New York and you got a job in Texas. I would say rent there for at least a couple months and then let's look at buying once we know you like that job. But I would definitely not be saying buy a house in New York right now because we just don't know if you're going to end up there and you don't want to limit your opportunities. Okay, let's see here. I think we covered a lot of them. Um, those are usually the biggest. Now, the other one, and this is like a rare, this is a pretty small segment of the market, but I want to make sure I address it. So when I'm looking at house cost versus rent cost, I'm looking at what makes mathematically sense. Mathematic sense. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so here's the deal. In the luxury market, so I would argue like houses that are 3 million plus, condos that are 3 million plus, depending on where it is in the country, a lot of times the math on renting is way better than buying. Because what I've noticed is there's certain parts of the country where they've kind of tapped out how much higher they can go just because the prices are so ridiculous that 
the rent that they can get, it's nowhere near it's nowhere near what you'd be able to buy for. So sometimes what the renter's actually paying is just covering the taxes, the insurance, if it's a condo, the HOA, and some maintenance, it's not even covering what would be a mortgage. And that's because we do see these cap out rates in the super luxury market. So when I think of places like that, I think of Healdsburg, California, right? Healdsburg is a Napa as well, wine country towns, right? There's a lot of houses that are four, five, six, 10, 15, 20 million dollars. But the odds are they're not gonna ever rent over $10,000 or $15,000. And that math isn't even gonna cover the property taxes and insurance. So there is a segment in the luxury market in certain parts of the country where the renting math does make sense. I would argue if you're in that hyper luxury market that you do already own a home, okay? Because if you're like, no, I'm just gonna rent forever, I don't think that's sustainable. Um, and that's, that's the overall with all of this. I feel that renting is a temporary situation, okay? And the reason is, I always picture what happens when you're 70 or 80 because what we saw a lot of in 2021 and 2022 and 2020 is we saw rents around the country in certain parts of the country double or triple. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of Texas, I'm thinking of Florida. You know, there's a lot of states where it just jumped and a lot of the renters were not prepared for this, okay? Now, if they had been homeowners, would their mortgage payments have gone up? No, their taxes would have. Insurance has gone up across the country, but the renters really got harmed. And a lot of times I'll hear someone say, oh, well, you know, my landlord's great. They're going to keep my rent low forever. And I'm like, how old are they? Seriously, how old are they? Because if they die and their kids get the house, are their kids going to want to be renting the house to you for below market forever? Probably not. Probably not. So look, renting can be a great situation temporarily, okay? And look, your temporary may be five years, it might be 10 years, it may be six months. But the bottom line is, is that if you look, and I'll, I'll put some statistics and graphs in this for you guys uh, in the comments that you can look at. If you look at over time, renting is not a safe option. You have no control. So it's a great temporary solution so that you can get everything in place to buy, okay? Um, if you have questions or comments, guys, feel free to reach out. I'm gonna be talking about buying on Thursday, but if you have anything else, if you're like, hey, Jen, you know, renting's actually really great for this or for that or for this, um, definitely drop it in the comments. Guys, if you're gonna hit me with any financial people like Grant Cardone, right? Grant's always like, you shouldn't buy the house you live in. Make sure you're doing enough research because all I have to do is Google and see that someone like him just bought a $40 million house to live in in addition to the $25 million house they bought in 2021 to live in. So as always, thanks for watching and I hope you guys tune in for the rest of the week.